Woo, look at them beautiful clouds rolling in. It's like we're going to get to enjoy some storms today. Oh yeah. Right. Look at this. That's where they get the term the Smoky Mountains. Absolutely beautiful. And I get to call this home. This is what life's about. Being thankful for just being able to breathe the air, being alive. Put these out yesterday to mark where I wanted my rollback driver to drop the skid steer off, but then I found a better place down the road. So this was kind of unnecessary, but it is what it is. Looks good. This guy doesn't need fuel, but I'm gonna top it out anyway, because with this weather, even though it's good weather, I don't wanna get soaked. Another good benefit to keeping the tank full is on this steeper ground, I want to get as much weight toward the bottom of that machine as I can for stability. So the weight of the fuel in the machine is going to help. And that's also why I don't clean the tracks out. That dirt in there adds a little bit of low weight. Four hundred and ten hours, it's time for grease. These locking loops are great unless it's in a tight spot. Then they're more aggravation than they're worse. The only grease to use. Everybody's guilty of it. I'm guilty of thinking it, but I don't follow through. Reloading a grease gun is the biggest pain in the patootie. But if you grease less, only because you don't want your grease gun to run out of grease, you're just costing yourself money. That is all there is to it. Now, I think a lot of people's issue with it is they don't like the mess. If you just wipe it down once in a while, I actually use brake cleaner on mine because it evaporates so quickly. Once in a while, I'll turn it to where it can't run really into the motor and I'll just spray the whole thing down, wipe it down with, you know, shop towels. I always wipe this rod down so it doesn't you know get a mess everywhere the less messy it is the more likely you're going to not mind doing it if you're ocd like me i there's no grease hardly any dirt in the cabs of my machines don't go to the parts store and buy those super expensive gloves like this these these are super expensive have some of these but reserve them for wrenching and and doing harder work that you need the strength for Here's a good example. These are super, super light. They tear really easy, but they're perfect for this and super cheap. This is common sense stuff. Even a gopher knows these things. Here's something to keep in mind also. Just because you have two grease fitting side by side, don't assume that you can just grease one of them. I made that mistake on my excavator on the main uh, pivot pin on the boom and those boosings are kind of sealed. So I was only greasing one. The other one wasn't wanting to take grease and I thought, okay, well, I'll just grease one. Well, within a very low amount of hours, we actually had to have new sleeves and pins put in. Lesson learned, learn from me. Just like here, you've got a grease fitting there and a grease fitting there. Take the time to raise the boom up and hit both of them, not just one. I don't have my blower with me today, but we're gonna go ahead and check this. Let's go over here so I don't suck it into that. Just rubber tires. See all that dirt? That'll slow your AC from working down. I've got about 90 more hours. I could use that blower, I guess. 
I've got about 90 more hours before it gets its first 500 hour service. So just knocking them out for now will do. I did blow out the intake filter for the engine. That one looks clean. Get that cover back on. I meant to check this when we were hauling this over from the other job. Birds love building in this one particular spot for some reason. We're not burning, see? Actually, that may have been rodents since there's a pine cone. But look, look in all of the crevices, nooks and crannies in this thing, especially if you're gonna burn. If you're gonna be burning, all that grease and, and organic material, you talk about a fire. And it may not burn the machine down, but it'll give you a good scare. All the YouTubers try to use a hook, you know, something at the beginning of the video to hook you and keep you watching. I, I don't really do that. If you like watching me, you like watching me. If you don't, I'd really be able to take off and go find somewhere you want to watch. But I'm glad you're here. Oh, man. I forgot to grease. There's two grease fittings for the locking pins. It'd be really easy for me to just say, oh, I'll do it this evening. But you do that enough times, and those things will start seizing up. And, and really, grease not only lubricates, it coats that pin and it'll keep it from rusting. And once a pin starts to rust and get pitted, it's not going to work smoothly. So I'm going to do that, then we're going to get to mowing. I guess I'll check this filter in here too. I don't think it'll be that dirty. Ooh. It is that dirty. I would not have expected that. Check this out. Yeah. I guess I'll bring my little uh, compressor tomorrow and blow these out. Huh. That figures. Okay. Now we'll lower this thing a little bit closer to the ground. I'm going to unlock the... Coupler. I'm going to unlock the coupler to exercise those pins up and down. And I also cycle every part of the boom. I'm not going to really have to exercise like the tracks or anything because that's obviously going to happen. But I cycle everything completely through every motion three times. At least two. And that way it coats everything really, really good and even. Sometimes the pin, the grease fitting in the end, there's not a hole that goes all the way through that pin for grease to come out both sides. Sometimes there's a grease fitting and just a hole going through one side. So that grease will come out, and even though you may only have 15 thousandths inch clearance on your pins, it may not coat it really, really good. How long your equipment will last is greatly dependent on you and really your uh, ability to make yourself grease it. Grease and change the oil. I've got these diversions for I guess water runoff cut across here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to run with them. Again I'm running full throttle. Because it's so wet, I don't want to crush them and make them to where they don't work anymore. I was hoping to get the drone up in the air for y'all. Get some aerial footage to make it a little bit different today, but the weather may not allow it. go ahead and mow down here around where this fella's building this fence that way I'm not slinging shrapnel at him while he's down here burning and building I wouldn't bother him but I try to be courteous I'll tell you there's a good chance he won't be working today so if 
and just slip by here without sliding off. Yes! I love it. I love fish hogging. Got a nice little deer dozer. Now, a lot of times, people that are going around contours of a field, this, that, and the other, they'll keep making all those turns. But with a skid steer, every time you turn, you tear the ground up just a little bit. So once I make all those contours and twists and turns, I'll just go straight and cut the little wigwags off. And then from then on, I can just drive straight. It makes it a lot easier. More boring, but easier. So like right here, I came around that way. I'm cutting this little notch off. And then for about 30 feet, I'm not gonna be cutting anything new. And it feels like I'm wasting time, but I'm, I'm really not. See, like we're coming out of the cut now. Coming out of the cut, and I'm just gonna kinda go straight ahead. Start making a little bit of a lazy turn. I'm gonna work more of the field up from here over until this weather passes. I think it will. And then we'll be able to move on with the steeper stuff later on. current mindset right now is that I'm going to go around this silt fencing here from years and years past and I'm mowing the perimeters of everything because Emma will be back in a couple of days and I want to have everything outlined for her to easily be able to see what to do when we get her in the seat and I also don't want to have her in any places that's going to be potentially above her skill level. So that's my plan. My screen's fogging up, so we'll chat in a minute.
are making really good time now. Do you think there's a chance that uh, they hit a hornet's nest? <laughs> Things are everywhere. They mad? All right, it finally dried up enough to where I could mow up here near the road. I believe this is the steepest slope that I've had to negotiate so far. Let's see. 29.7, I think it's a little bit steeper back just a little. Yeah, right there, we finally bumped just right there, yep. 29.3 degrees. I've read that these machines can go to 45 degrees without tipping over. I think the biggest issue would be that you would slide. And right here you can see I can move pretty fast. And as long as it's smooth, it's stable. So like right there I slipped just a little because my mower dug in. I feel quite comfortable. I mean, like, my body, I'm getting tired from holding myself up. And, yeah, like, right there, I'm sliding just a little bit. I'm probably going to have to slow my speed down. And, yeah, see, I'm kind of just plowing my way along. I'm really pleased with the stability of this machine. I'm just going to keep working my way out through here while I've got this drier conditions. It's still pretty damp. Certainly a lot better than it was. Yeah, each time I track back and forth, it wants to slide a little bit more. Let's go back out through here, see if we can get that last cut all the way up. Usually that's a little bit steeper, but I'm going to try it. You guys will be able to use the road as a little bit more of a reference for grade. Let's see if I can get worked up there. Yeah, as long as you can get it fairly dry conditions, this thing's stable. Prior to this job, the steepest that I had this machine on, I think was like 23 or 24 degrees, something like that. Oh, 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 we may not be able to do it. Hmm. There's definitely a little bit more of a shoulder, and I don't want to beat my blades up. Yeah, it's definitely got a little drop off here. I don't want to take a chance on it pitching, and now that will throw you over. That, that'll tip you over in a hurry, so will abort right there. I'm going to finish mowing all this steeper stuff. We'll catch a video of that and that'll probably be it for the day.
I think we're in a really good place to call it a day for this video. I got all of that really steep area over there mowed. Now I'm kind of at the second to worst area and I'm just kind of working it at a 45 degree angle. It's still pretty wet. I was mowing side to side. It's about a 30 degree angle, but this area, as you can see, is kind of shaded and I was tearing the ground up a little bit more than what I wanted to. So I'm uh, swallowing my pride and working it at an angle, taking the easy way out. But this is a prime example. If you guys want to make the best money you can with your equipment, take the jobs in the beginning that nobody else wants. I don't know of anybody much in this area that would take this job. They, they would be saying phrases like, I'm not risking my equipment. I'm not crazy. Take your time, slow down. Watch plenty of YouTube videos. There's lots of videos about this. There's lots of bush hogging channels. And even if they're bush hogging with a tractor, watch it anyway if you're gonna be using this or an excavator because the fundamentals of keeping your center of gravity low are pretty much the same. It's just that this machine, certainly this machine and like the excavator, they're far more forgiving than tractors. Tractors, especially four wheel drive tractors, they will get you in trouble, believe me. And I meant to say yesterday kind of how I'm charging for this job. Let me, let me check my records and make sure I tell you guys right. I just wanted to make sure. Okay, given the sl overall slopes of this job, accounting for wet weather potential was high. Look at that rat. There he goes. <laughs> if I was a rat, I'd be long gone before I got within a foot, but that just goes to show you they'll stand their ground. Um, so for the skid steer, on this particular job, I'm running 225 an hour. And when I bring the excavator, I'm gonna run about $250 per hour. Now the excavator is slower, so why would I charge more? It's just a more expensive machine to run. And frankly, I can position it in places that are a lot more dangerous than I can with this. Therefore, its value goes up. Now there will be people, I actually had a guy that lives near me call me up and he, he said, I don't think it's a real good idea to be sharing your prices. And I guess maybe I was out pricing him. <laughs> and I told him uh, just to worry about his pricing and I'll worry about mine. Uh, I said it as nicely as I could. But the way I see it, I get a lot of customers on uh, from YouTube and if somebody's looking for a service and there's another rat uh, in this area and they find me it saves me time on the phone for them to already have an idea of what I'm gonna charge yeah that fluctuates with the factors but for the most part it, it's all the same now take note what year it is in this video this video is gonna be up for years and that price is only good maybe for a month or two it can totally change from season to season there's just too many factors and that's why I'm not worried about people trying to, to take my prices and use them against me plus when was the last time do, do you see Outback Steakhouse hiding their prices from McDonald's no the reason being is if you give your work the best effort you can and treat everybody good you'll develop that outback reputation if you kind of just barely skimp by and give people the bare minimum you're going to get a mcdonald's expectation however come i love mcdonald's full disclosure i'm just saying that if somebody can't provide the same service as you they they can't price the same i feel like i'm too long-winded in this video Thank you guys for watching, and if you're watching this video because you're trying to learn this stuff and you have a dream of starting a business like this, today's the day. Just, just stop dreaming, and if you have a plan and the only thing stopping you is the anxiety of not making it, that's a terrible excuse, and that's all it is. It's an excuse to not 
do it for fear of failure. So to take that leap of faith and go for it. You guys can do it. We love you and we'll see you on the next one.